spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, America's most recommended yarn brand. Red Heart has partnered with the Red Cross to invite you to stitch a hug for those in need. Red Cross serves families that have lost their homes to fires or hurricanes or other disasters. This is a heartfelt opportunity for you to use your passion for knitting or crochet to create something special for someone in need. A blanket that can be used by the Red Cross in disaster relief efforts across the U.S. All you need is some Red Heart yarn, a free pattern for making the Red Heart Cares blanket, and information on where to get your stitched hug to those in need. Just in case you need a little help, I've created a couple tutorials, one for knitting and one for crochet, to show you how to make the Red Heart Cares blanket. So let's go ahead and jump in and make the Red Heart Cares blanket for someone in need. Let's make the knit version of the Red Heart Cares blanket. For this blanket, you're going to need some red and white yarn. You can choose to use Red Heart Super Saver or With Love or Soft. The yarn amounts required for each one of those yarns is given in the free pattern available on redheart.com. Along with the yarn, you're going to need a pair of size 8 knitting needles. Now, I prefer to use circular needles because I find it easier for me to knit with them. But if you like to use straight needles, you can absolutely make this blanket using straight needles. You just need to make sure they're U.S. size 8 or 5 millimeter. Along with that, you're going to need a tapestry needle to weave in your ends and to whip stitch the blocks together. Now, I prefer the bent tip steel tapestry needle um, to weave in all of my ends because I find it easier. But if you only have a yarn needle or a darning needle um, that doesn't have a bent tip, those will work as well. Please go ahead and gather your materials along with the free pattern over on redheart.com. Join me back here and I'm going to get you started with how to cast on and then we'll show you how to knit, bind off, and whip stitch those blocks together. Let's make the Red Heart Cares blanket. This blanket is made up of squares and rectangles. You're going to make a total of 10 squares using color A and 5 squares using color B. And then you will make a total of 10 rectangles with color A. Once all of those are made, you will whip stitch them together to create the beautiful cross in the center of the blanket with the white around the outside of it. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to use a different number of stitches than you will use for the actual pattern. But I will give you the number of stitches you're going to need to cast on for your, your actual squares or your rectangles. To begin, you're going to cast on 51 stitches for both the square and the rectangle, making it really convenient. You're going to start off with the slip knot. So you put the tail of the yarn in the palm of your hand, wrap the tail around your forefinger and your middle finger, and when you bring it back up, cross over the beginning tail. Now, when I flip my hand over, I have a yarn in the back and a yarn in front. Take my finger, I go underneath the one in front, and I grab the one in back and pull up and I get a slip knot. I'm going to do that one more time. I have the tail in the palm of my hand, take the yarn, wrap it around my forefinger and middle finger, come back up and cross over. When I turn over, I'm going to hold the tail so that they're not going anywhere. I have my finger go underneath the first one, grab the second one, pull up, take my fingers out, and if I pull, I get a slip knot. Now I'm going to place that slip knot directly onto my needles. And if you remember at the beginning, I said you don't need to use circulars. You can absolutely use straight needles if you choose to. I just prefer to use circulars to accommodate the number of stitches we're going to have on there. And I find it easier to hang on to my circulars. Now we're going to cast on 51 stitches. I'm just going to do 15 stitches for this demonstration. If you're making the actual blanket, you want to do 51. And we're going to do a knitted cast on. So what we do is you have the the needle with your stitch, your slip stitch on it in your left hand. Take your right hand, with your right hand needle, you're going to put it from left to right into the front leg of that stitch. Okay? I'm going to use my left hand to hold both needles and I'm holding my yarn with my right hand. I'm going to go around my right hand needle. Can you see that? I'm going to go around it. So I'm going underneath and back over top. When I come back down to re-grip my right hand needle, I'm going to keep tension on this yarn, 
because this loop that we just created on the, the right hand needle, we're gonna pull it through that stitch, okay? So I wanna make sure I keep tension. So I'm taking my right hand needle and I'm popping that stitch back out of the loop on my left hand needle. Once I do that, I take my right hand needle and extend that stitch. And now I'm gonna take my left hand needle, come around and swoop and put that stitch back on the left hand needle. So now I have two, let's do that again. I'm gonna go into the, the new stitch. I'm gonna go into the stitch, grab my needles, take my yarn, go around the right hand needle, re-grab my right hand needle, keeping tension on my yarn, and then pull the right hand needle back out of that stitch on the left hand needle, extend it, take my left hand needle, and I'm gonna swivel around and put it on. I'm gonna show you again. Go in, around, out, and then I'm gonna extend, swivel, and put it on. Now I wanna make sure I always do that swivel because if I were to just place that stitch onto my needle, so say it's like this and I just decided, oh, I'm gonna just scoop it up like this. Why do I have to swivel? It won't lay on your needles correctly. So you wanna make sure you swivel around and scoop at the yarn, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get 15 on. Now that you have your stitches cast on, go ahead and cast on your full number of stitches for the square. Join me back here. I'm going to show you how to knit. You've cast on your stitches for your square or your rectangle. Now you need to know how to knit. What's really great is for the square and the rectangle both, the whole project is done just with knitting. And when you knit every row, that's called garter stitch. So what we're going to do here is we have our stitches still on our left hand needle. See how they're resting on our left hand needle? And we're gonna go into the stitch just like we did before, go around just like we did before, and pop out just like we did before. Only this time, instead of extending this stitch and putting it back on the left hand needle, we're gonna let that stitch that we went into on our left hand needle now jump off because this is our new stitch. So I'm gonna let that stitch jump off. So now I'm gonna repeat that. I go in the stitch, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. You'll notice that I'm maintaining control of the stitches as I'm knitting them by not letting them get too close to the tip on my right hand needle and then as they're resting on my left hand needle, I want them to come down to this tapered section so it's easier to get into them. But I'm making sure that they're not falling off by using my left hand forefinger to really control those stitches. You don't get to control many things in life, so let's make sure we get to control our stitches, right? So they don't fall off the needle too quickly. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off, in, around, out, off, in, around, out, off, in, around, out, off. Now, I'm at the end of the row, so what I need to do is I would take my needle with all the stitches in it, which is resting in my right hand, put it into my left hand, just like you normally would, my empty needle back into my right hand, and I would begin again. First thing you wanna make sure is that your work is starting to flow down the needle. You want it to flow down the needle. You never want all of these stitches to be turned to the top and going up. You wanna make sure they're flowing down. The second thing you wanna make sure of is as we're doing garter stitch, you see how you have all these nice bumps after we turn our work? You have those nice bumps that are resting right underneath the needle. You want to make sure that your very first stitch right here actually has that bump. The reason I mention it is because all too often, knitters will try and tighten this first stitch, and so they take the yarn and they pull it up to try and make it nice and tight, but what it does is you're extending the stitch from the row below and moving the bump way back here. So now it looks like you have two stitches, and we don't want that. So even though this might be a little bit loose, that's okay. You wanna make sure you see that bump there, okay? You wanna make sure that bump is there before you begin. 
and you go into the stitch that's right above the bump, the stitch that's resting on your left hand needle. So I'm gonna go in, grab my yarn around, out, and off. If that stitch is a little bit loose, take your working yarn and just tug it a little bit and wiggle your needle and it tightens up that stitch just ever so slightly. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. Now I'm gonna also show you how to do this holding the yarn in your other hand just in case. It's the exact same motion, it's just holding the yarn in the other hand. So I'm gonna go in, around, see how this around? It's just like before, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. In, around, out, off. I'm gonna do this all the way to the end of the row. And when I get to the end of the row, all of my stitches will be back on my right hand needle, so I will need to change hands again for uh, to put all of my stitches into my left hand. And when I do that, I go ahead and once again, I make sure that all of my stitches are flowing down. I make sure I can see the bump and I carry on. Now I'm gonna set this aside once I set that down and let's pull in one that I've already completed. So right here, we have one that I have actually already completed. My first cast on stitches are down here at the very bottom and then I knit every row. When you knit every row, you get this really great fabric called garter stitch. And what's awesome here is with garter stitch, each one of these ridges counts as two rows. So when you are carrying on and you need to knit 95 rows for the square or 127 rows for the rectangle, but you don't really want to keep track of that, you can count your rows and know, okay, so there's there's two, four, six, eight, ten, so on and so forth. So you can count your rows based on the ridges and it'll make it really easy. Once you have all of your stitches knitted, so you have them cast on, you knit for the number of rows you have, you, you need to knit, and then you need to bind off, which means finishing your stitches. So I'm gonna show you how to bind off next. You've knitted your square or your rectangle and you're ready to finish it off. Let me show you how to do the bind off. For binding off your work, once you have the number of rows completed that the pattern states, you're going to do a knitted bind off. And it's really simple. It's using the same motion as you've been doing all along, both with the cast on and the knit stitch. What we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna knit the first two stitches. So I'm gonna knit one and knit the second one. Now that I have these two stitches on my right hand needle, I'm gonna take my left hand needle, go into the front leg of the back stitch, so it's the very first one I did. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this needle to have this stitch leapfrog up and over that one and off the needle. So as I come down here to the tip, I'm using my left hand needle to have that back stitch leapfrog up and over, see that? So now that it's over it, I remove my left hand needle and I'm left with one stitch on my right hand needle. Do it again. So now I knit one stitch. So I'm back to two stitches on my right hand needle. Take my left hand needle, go into the leg on the back stitch, have it jump up and over the front stitch, remove my left hand needle, I'm left to one stitch. In, around, out, off, into the back stitch, leapfrog up and over the front stitch and off and you just carry on doing this down the whole row. You wanna make sure you aren't pulling your stitches super snug after you leapfrog because then your bind off will be super tight and you might not have a very uh, uniform square or rectangle. So just do, the, at, or do this at the same tension as you've been knitting the whole way. You'll notice that after I leapfrog over, I always knit one more stitch from the left needle so that I get back to two stitches on my right hand needle and have the back stitch leapfrog the front. Going all the way down. Once you've bound off all of your stitches and made all of your squares and rectangles, join me back here. I'm gonna show you how to whip stitch your pieces together and then your, your Red Heart Cares blanket is complete.
You've spent a lot of time knitting squares and rectangles for this blanket, and now it's time to whip stitch them together. Let's finish up your Red Heart Cares blanket. The first thing you're gonna notice is I have finished two very small sample squares, but I've left my tails there. The reason I left my tails is because I wanna try and use my tail to whip stitch this together, okay? You don't have to do this. You could absolutely weave in your tails and use a separate yarn to whip stitch everything together. But I really like the idea of using my tails that are already attached because it's one less thing I have to weave in later. So what I'm going to do is I'm using my bent tip tapish needle and I'm going to thread my yarn onto my tapish needle. So to do this, it's really simple. If you take your needle and just take your yarn and pinch it around the eye of the needle, and keep that real snug, take the needle out, put the eye of the needle where you pinched it and just wiggle it on. That pulls right on through, voila, you're ready to go. Now to whip stitch pieces together, it's really easy. You use um, the, the diagram, so you're gonna follow along the diagram and place the, the squares or the rectangles where they need to go. And you go ahead and take your yarn and you do a whip stitch. Now, you can go ahead and begin here at the beginning with a figure eight if you want, but the yarn is already attached, so you really don't have to. But I like to do that. So I'm gonna come over here to the corresponding side. I'm going up and I'm gonna come over here back to where I began and go up and just join it, okay? Going back over here to the beginning and I'm gonna come up one more time. You don't have to start with that if your yarn is already attached, but I like to do it. First thing I'm gonna do is you're just gonna go in and back, so in one side, back out the other side, okay? Pull your yarn through, go in one side, back out the other side. Pull your yarn through, in and out. This is a whip stitch. It's really easy if you do the corresponding stitches, one for one, all the way up. It makes it very simple to make sure that your pieces match up really easily, okay? Once you've gone all the way up, you'll see that the, the nice whip stitch joins these pieces together really pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pull over the finished blanket so that you can see how this looks. Right here, you can see where the whip stitch was used to join the red to the white. And then a whip stitch was used over here also, but along this side, this is where you're joining up garter stitch edges to garter stitch edge instead of stitch for stitch. So it's a little bit trickier just because you wanna make sure that you're trying to match up your edges but it's still, it's super easy to do. All you need to use is your bent tip tapestry needle and either some new yarn or the tails of your squares as you're working them. Once you've finished your blanket, go over to the Red Heart Facebook page and use the hashtag Stitch a Hug and show us your knitted masterpiece. Thank you so much for joining this effort. And if you want to find out more information on how you can help, go to redheart.com forward slash redcross. I'm Marley Bird. Talk to you soon. Bye.